December 29, 1974. The AFC Championship game between the Oakland Raiders and the Pittsburgh Steelers. The left, the left, the you the are right. there. Stabler play faking, back to set up. Going deep to Branch again, he's got a step. Touchdown, Raiders! Cliff Branch, Branch got the step on block at about the 10 yard line. And when they're conducting those football clinics, a film of that one would be the perfect illustration. The Raiders led 10 to three. Only one quarter left before another glorious chapter could be added to the most memorable sports history of our time. What else but a Super Bowl return? marred the Oakland Raiders' awesome, unrivaled record of accomplishments. But fate would write a new ending, a rarely called tripping penalty, wiped out this Raider scoring opportunity. The football itself bounced away, defying Oakland attempts at capture. Super Bowl laurels faded in a mist of heartbreak and tears. What remained was a brilliant 12 and 2 season, best in the game. What remained was a magnificent playoff triumph over the defending world champion Miami Dolphins in one of the greatest games ever played. What remained was a total domination of professional football since 1963 in terms of consistent victory. No organization even approaches the Raiders' unbelievable 115 wins against only 42 losses during these 12 years. What remained was 10 consecutive winning seasons, seven championships in eight years. These monumental achievements are history. Yet the true greatness of the Raiders remains in its future, a proud future, fueled and fired by their relentless, unceasing commitment to excellence. In Buffalo, the Raiders opened on the road for the fifth consecutive year. Before a Monday night television audience and 80,000 unloving fans, Art Tom scored late to put the Raiders ahead. But a final Buffalo rally sealed a 21-20 Oakland defeat, made more damaging by the loss of dependable Tony Klein for two months. The Raiders returned to the stadium built in response to their dynamic rise the Oakland Coliseum. Cross-country travel left the Raiders' outstanding head coach John Madden and his skillful aides just five days to prepare for Kansas City. It was time enough for these thorough professionals. Mike Ciani was on the receiving end of one Ken Stabler strike. And then the diverse Oakland attack sprung Pete Banaszak for 20 and a touchdown. The silver and black defense was overwhelming. And number 58, Monty Johnson stormed for one of four Raider sacks. He also grabbed one of five Raider interceptions that limited the Chiefs to only 86 yards passing. Rookie tight end Dave Casper's second score of the day capped an impressive conquest 27 to 7. 
In Pittsburgh, the Raider defense was overpowering, making quarterback Joe Gillum's day a disaster. Big Bubba Smith, number 77, dropped him for a 20-yard setback on one play. Defensive design and execution, plus alert special teams, helped turn Pittsburgh's steel to rust and rendered them scoreless for the first time in 132 games. Ken Stabler was neither sacked nor intercepted, and his bullet to Cliff Branch finished Pittsburgh 17 to nothing. In Cleveland, Santa Jim Otto, sixth-year veteran guard George Beeler, third-year tackle John Vella, and Pro Bowl performers Art Shell, number 78, and co-captain Gene Upshaw, number 63 gave near-perfect protection to a surging attack sparked by Clarence Davis's extra-effort score. Twice, the mighty Raiders overcame 10-point deficits while ringing up 445 yards and a record 90 offensive plays. The defense clicked on interceptions by number 32, Jack Tatum and three last quarter thefts by number 43, George Atkinson. Number 24, defensive captain Willie Brown picked off another as the Raiders rolled for 40 points en route to becoming 1974's top scoring team. In San Diego, Coach Madden's wandering war wagon was on the road for the fourth time in five weeks and the defense was angry. On offense, the snake struck twice. Once to Cliff Branch, whose style is a flash of light, a puff of smoke, and gone. The second scoring strike went to tight end Bob Moore, giving the Raiders a 14 to 10 win and up their record to four and one. In week six, the tough Cincinnati Bengals jumped to a 14 to three lead. Ageless George Blander, oldest player in NFL history, kicked two field goals to keep the Raider attack moving. His second sure shot put Oakland ahead 23 to 21. But the Bengals bounced back and led 27 to 23 with but one minute 36 seconds to go. Daring comebacks are a Raider trademark, but the silver and black needed more than just a field goal. With practice calm and poise, Ken Stabler marched them goalward. Although playing without timeouts or huddles, the disciplined, determined Raiders, to a man, were rivers of ice water, cold, relentless. Finally, the game hinged on a few seconds, a few plays. And Raider Radio's Bill King described it this way. All right. Siani is back in, slotted right inside. Boletnikov branch to the left at a double wing. It is third and ten. Backpedaling Stabler looks. He's in trouble, but he throws. Siani makes a catch on the five. He's driven out of bounds. One yard line. Holy Toledo. It's first and goal to go for the Oakland Raiders on the one yard line of the Bengals. Remember, there are no timeouts left. They've got to line up without a huddle. 13 seconds left to go. Will the Raiders be denied on the brink of this touchdown? Branch goes to the left, double tight ends again. What a critical situation of drama here. Here's Stabler, under center. Gives the ball to Smith. Smith running wide to the right, the five, the three, the two. Touchdown, Oakland! Charlie Smith scores! The Raiders take the lead, eight seconds remaining. But eight seconds was not enough for the Bengals, and the Raiders, with their dramatic 30-27 win, 
now carried a six-game winning streak as they traveled to meet their frustrated Cross Bay rivals. The Silver and Black had triumphed in San Francisco during preseason play. The return visit would end the same way as number 44, Marv Hubbard, powered for 117 yards and one touchdown. Hubbard's act was followed by still more fireworks. Now back to pass. Stabler, after a fake, has got time. He's throwing deep for Branch behind Taylor. He's got it to 25, the 20, the 15. He's at the 10, veers away. Touchdown, Raiders! Well, it's exhibition season revisited. Bruce Taylor didn't get burned. He got absolutely enveloped in a conflagration. Cliff Branch just singed his tail by seven yards. And Stabler hitting him on the button was on the throwing end of a 64-yard touchdown pass to Branch. Raider domination continued in this series, which is totally commanded by Oakland's 7-3 win margin. Under unyielding pressure, the Niners lost the ball, and George Atkinson's recovery set up a stabler to Dave Casper score. Then Ray Guy, pro football's leading punter, boomed a cloud scraper, and the 49ers return man wilted in the face of angry coverage. Number 34, Harold Hart, zoomed 40 yards to end the San Francisco earthquake of 1974, 35 to 24. In Denver, the Raiders were undaunted by Rocky Mountain winter. Even in snow, John Madden's forces were ready. Twice, Ken Stabler superbly used the seconds earned by his fierce blockers to find sure-handed Fred Bolitnikoff for scores. These helped Bolitnikoff become the first player in Raider history to score 60 touchdowns. Cliff Branch also hit pay dirt twice to continue his route to the playoffs and a league-leading 13 touchdown catches. It was seven in a row for the Silver and Black, 28 to 17. Back in sunny Oakland for the season's ninth week, the Raiders faced the Detroit Lions, who saw their own four-game win streak demolished as Bubba Smith and number 86, Gerald Irons, crashed in. Linebacker Dan Connors, number 55, came up with two interceptions to help Oakland finish second in that NFL department. Then came time to remind pro football that the bomb is back in Oakland. Raider runners blasted out 284 yards. Led by veteran Marv Hubbard and newcomer Harold Hart, products of a scouting operation that Newsweek magazine labeled one part fanaticism, one part CIA, and one part genius. Oakland 35, Detroit 13, eight in a row. The San Diego Chargers came north with lightning bolts on their helmets. But the real lightning in the Coliseum wore number 21 in silver and black. The defense leaped in pounding waves. It rose highest when challenged, as Gerald Irons and Skip Thomas, number 26, destroyed final Charger hopes. Win number nine in a row by a 17-10 margin.
When the Broncos came to Oakland, they were meeting the first team in the entire NFL to earn a playoff spot. Seven times in eight years, the Raiders had established their mastery by winning the Western Division Championship. But despite Ken Stabler's two touchdown passes, the league's longest 1974 winning streak finally ended 20 to 17. The New England Patriots paid for that loss as they too found that on the gridiron highway, speed does kill. It was an enormous love-in for loyal Raider fans as Stabler hit Branch, Belitnikov, and more. Twin Terrors, number 82, Horace Jones, and number 60, Oda Sistrunk, pounded Plunkett and Patriots all day. Pressure paid off when Skip Thomas scored, working with a secondary including proven veterans Nemiah Wilson and Jimmy Warren in place of the injured Willie Brown and Jack Tatum. Then rookies Larry Lawrence, number 13, and Harold Hart ran the option to finalize an Oakland victory 41 to 26. In cold, windy Kansas City, the Raiders played the Chiefs for the first time in a decade without a championship at stake. Throughout the bitter day, the Oakland defense made big plays as Horace Jones recovered and rambled 45 yards. With Brown and Tatum still out, number 20, Jimmy Warren, stepped in and made a crucial steal. Then, in a tense finish, veteran quarterback Darrell LaMonica hit Cliff Branch for a narrow 7-6 Raider win. Before the final league game against Dallas, Kenny Stabler was presented the 1974 Gorman Award as the player who best exemplified the pride and spirit of the Oakland Raiders. Then a national TV audience saw the Raiders bound for glory with Fred Belitnikoff leading the way while achieving his eighth consecutive season of 40 or more receptions. Ken Stabler then found Charlie Smith, number 23, on a pattern that would loom large in the upcoming playoff classic. Suddenly, the Cowboys were struggling for survival when alert linebacker Phil Villapiano recovered a fumble to set up one of the towering happenings of this or any season. Now, Raiders attacking unit takes over on the 28th. Crowd hooting and hollering and roaring because George Flanders at quarterback. Put him to look. He throws. Branch, five yard line. Touchdown, Raiders. And Superman does indeed live in Oakland. While they hearken back to 1970, I think George Blanda has just been re-elected king of the world. That's the first pass George has thrown in anger in a league game since 1972. This pass helped close the league season with a 27-23 triumph. And George Blanda was named NFL Man of the Year. Introducing the Raider defense. From the opening kickoff, the Raider Dolphin playoff exploded with excitement as Nat Moore raced 89 yards to score. The 
the sellout Coliseum crowd despaired. But to a man, the pride and poise that had made these Raiders so feared and respected never wavered. It's third and five and a half. On a quick count, Stabler drops straight back, sets up, punts, lobs one down the middle for Smith! Touchdown, Raiders! The crowd comes apart at the scene as Charlie Smith catches one from 32 yards down the middle. The identical pattern and play that Smith ran and Stabler hit him on against the Dallas Cowboys. Belipnikov missed by inches. But radios Bill King and the NBC TV crew of Kurt Gowdy, Don Meredith, and Aldi Rogatis alternately described the heroics that followed. The ball on the 13, second and 10. Stabler back, looks left, throws right. Well, let me cough. A leaping catch. Touchdown, Oakland. did a good job of looking off the defense, but the ball, which was actually deflected once off Belitnikov's hands when Foley contested it and the right sideline in the end zone was grabbed back by Fred as Foley kept his pressure on, landed on top of him. Belitnikov has six receptions, 86 yards, one touchdown. They're going to the air now. Here's the deep one to Brad. Deep, deep. He's got it! Miami trailed 21 to 19, but they had not become two-time world champions by giving up. They roared back and powered into the end zone to lead again, 26 to 21. With only two minutes and one second left and professional football's most disciplined defense to overcome, Oakland Raider hopes seemed to hang on the most slender of threads. Stabler led the charge to Fred Belitnikov for 18, and then 20 more, 40 seconds. To Frank Pitts for a crucial, heart-stopping five yards. Now it was do or die. This is a classic playoff game, just like the Miami-Kansas City game on Christmas Day. It is a classic. Three year. years ago. No question, these are two of the very finest football teams we have this year, and they're putting on a great show. There he is, fading, looking, looking, looking. He's under the gun. He's tied, he throws, it is! Oh, he caught it, he caught it! He caught it. Unbelievable! The Raiders had taken the lead 27-26 when Stabler had to loop the ball up because he was hit as he threw. It looked like he might have been lobbing it into the promised land for Miami. But no, Mike Colin couldn't get there. Davis got there first, and it was the Raiders' promised land. They need three to win it, though. That's important, but there's only 21 seconds. Greasy retreats to the left. He goes way up the middle. Intercepted to the piano at the 50. Time running down. 13 seconds to play. Oakland football. And I think Oakland victory. It's 13 seconds away from confirmation. The crowd going wild here at the Coliseum. Madden, in his delirium of joy, goes about 20 yards out onto the field to welcome the defenders and Villa Piano. Villa Piano gets mad in the football. He displays it for all to see. I guess Alameda is still the house of miracles, huh? The house of thrills. You'll never see a better game than this one, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure you'll agree. Frankly, it was maybe the greatest football game I have ever seen. It was just incredible. Incredible indeed. 
But football fans everywhere know that great games and great seasons are the destiny of the Raiders since 1963, when Al Davis came to Oakland and first made the pledge to build the greatest organization in sports. The Oakland Raiders have continually defied all odds to become professional football's winningest team. Dedication, desire, class, and courage, not miracles. These qualities symbolize the Raider organization and players like Dave Dalby, special teams captain Bob Hudson, Warren Bankston, Corver, Lawrence, Medlin, Dennery, Gary Weaver, Van Egan, Smith, and Jack Owenko. Assistant coaches Tom Doms, Oliver Spencer, Tom Flores, Bob Zeman, Don Shinnick, and Joe Scanella. Trainer George Anderson, equipment director Richard Romanski, and others. Now only the world championship remains to add a crowning glory to the Raiders' unparalleled level of success. But now and always, one standard remains unchanged for the silver and black their never-ending commitment to excellence.